Hey guys, today we are gonna be doing a full day wear test of the new Hourglass Veil Skin Tint. Now Hourglass sent me this really beautiful PR package with three shade options. Let me show you this beautiful packaging. Ooh. Oh, it's really tight in the box there. So it's the Veil Hydrating Skin Tint and their little tagline here says, less is everything. Sorry, it's just embossed. You probably can't even see it. And if I open this up, I've got three shades and this brush, which is great. I do like the Hourglass synthetic brushes. They're very nice. Let's see what it says here. 96% said skin feels hydrated all day. 93% said skin instantly looks and feels smoother. I'm down for that. 90% said skin instantly has a fresh, healthy glow. Also down for that. It is available in 18 sheer flexible shades. And if you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, you know that this type of base product is right in my wheelhouse. I love a tint. I love things that are moisturizing. Um, I don't really like heavy coverage. Uh, I'm not a matte girl. I really like a natural glowy kind of finish. So I'm very, very excited to be trying out this product. So let's see what shades they sent me. Number nine, number five, and number seven. Okay, so let me put this away. Yeah, there's nothing else in here. And I'm gonna start with number five, just because I'm pretty pale. Um, I did get some color when I was uh, traveling about because I was out walking around quite a bit. Uh, but generally, I'm, I'm a pretty pale gal. So let's see. Oh, there's a nice uh, like little safety seal here. And this is a squeezy tube. I'm just gonna squeeze out some of this number five. And I do think this is going to be a good match. Let me just, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Okay, so thankfully, I didn't even have to open up seven and nine, which is great. Uh, let me just set those aside and just gonna finish using up what I uh, put onto the back of my hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this brush because I do like applying makeup with brushes. I'm not really a sponge or fingers fan, so. Let me use this since they sent it. So I don't see that this brush has a name or anything. It just says Hourglass here on the handle, but I don't see a name for this brush. Of course, I've already gotten foundation all over it, but it has a really nice slant to it. It's oval shaped. And like I mentioned, these are synthetic haired. So let me go ahead and blend in. Ooh, the bristles are very, very soft. Blends in quite nicely. And as suspected, the coverage is really light. So let me go ahead and squeeze out a little bit more. Did I shake this up? Let me make sure. And just shake this up a little bit. Basically squeezed out the same amount there. Just gonna finish applying. So I'm just applying it to uh, this side of my face here. Oh, and as I'm blending this in, I just wanna mention, I am doing this video before reviewing the Westman Atelier Liquid Super Loaded Highlights. I was gonna do that first because um, I had those products before I got this one, but I did a poll on YouTube and on Instagram asking you guys which one you'd rather see first, and this was a very clear winner. So we're going with this one first. I'm gonna try and do the Westman Atelier Liquid Super Loaded Highlights um, soon, but um, it's probably gonna be a couple of days, but maybe this weekend I'll have a review of those products. So definitely stay tuned for that if you're interested. I think I have blended this out enough. Now, I do think the shade five is a good one. If you use me as a shade reference, I would say if anything, go down, because again, I do think I got a little bit of color while I was out and about walking around quite a bit. Um, over in Italy and in London. And so if this is a good shade for me now, it's probably like a little deep for me regularly. So yeah, anyway, this is a shade five. Okay, so looking in the mirror right in front of me here, I do see a little bit of radiance, which is really nice. And the coverage is very, very light as you can see. Maybe up top here you can see a little bit more of the coverage. You can see that my forehead is a little bit deeper um, than the area that I put the tint on. And I definitely see coverage over here versus this side of my face where I still see like little hyperpigmentation and my freckles and things. It definitely looks more evened out here. So 
Yes, I would say the coverage is light, but it is there. All right, so I'm gonna finish applying to the rest of my face, and by then I'm hoping to be able to tell whether or not I have to powder on this side. Usually, you know, if I give it a couple minutes and if I start to look a little bit shiny already, I know right off the bat that I need to powder. But because I have dry skin, I don't like to powder unless I have to. So we're gonna go ahead and finish applying to the rest of my face. And that also gives us a better idea how much coverage this has. I always feel like just putting it on half of my face never really gives the full story for some reason. You know, even if I'm just looking on that half of the face, it just, I don't know. I always like underestimate the coverage until I, I apply it to my whole face. All right, now that I have it all over my face, I would definitely recommend, again, if you use me as a shade reference, I would definitely recommend going down a shade or two. And I don't think it's necessarily the tone, I think it's the undertone to this skin tint. It's a little bit on the warmer side. Actually, let me look at how they're describing these shades. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned that this is uh, retailing for $49. And I do want to mention, I have a 10% off coupon code at Hourglass. It's our, it's not Hourglass 10, it's Michelle 10 on hourglasscosmetics.com. So if you want to get it there, you can get 10% off with my code. My code is an affiliate code. So if you use my code, then I do get a commission, very small commission off of that sale. So wanted to mention that, but let's see, how do they describe shade number five? Okay, shade number five is light with warm undertones. So number three is described as fair with neutral undertones. That probably would work well for me. Or even the four, which is described as fair with cool undertones, would work well for me. I'm usually a neutral. That's usually just what works for my skin tone. Yeah, so I would recommend shade three or four if you use me as shade reference. Okay, I am going to get up real close to my mirror here. And although this has a light coverage, as I think we can all agree on, and it does have a radiant uh, kind of finish, which I like. There is something slightly makeup-y looking about this. Does that make sense? I feel like sometimes there's um, makeup products, I'm trying to think of uh, an example, but there are some base products that even have fuller coverage than this, but they don't look makeup -y. And I don't see it everywhere. I see it like around my nose and around my mouth area. It just looks a little heavier than what I would expect a light skin tint to look. But anyway, I'm being very, very nitpicky right now. But taking a close look, at least on this side of my face where I applied it first, I think I could probably stand to use a little bit of powder like just in this area where I tend to get really shiny, I have larger pores. It is the summertime too, where I tend to use powder more often than I do in the winter time. So let me go ahead and grab uh, some Hourglass powder. All right, I have my Butterfly palette from Hourglass, which has the finishing powder in diffused light here. This is the one that I like to use kind of underneath my eyes, very brightening, it's very pretty. And I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 113 brush. So just gonna pick up a little bit and just dab right in that area. It's kind of below my under eye. I'm just kind of like freckle area. So there it is with powder and without. Yeah, that looks really nice, right? It looks really soft. So let me do the same thing to the other side. That looks really nice. It looks very blurred and we're doing good. I don't even think I need to put it on the tip of my nose, which is usually where I need to powder. It's usually very, very shiny and very greasy, but I don't really see that going on. I just really saw it like right there. But I think that did it. And I think that's all I wanna do because I do wanna see how the skin tint wears, you know, just kind of all on its own on my skin. Again, very dry, mature. I'm gonna be 50 in a couple of months. So yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanna report. Ah, there is something I do wanna mention before I let you go. There was an Hourglass product that came in a squeezy tube, I do believe it has been discontinued. I wanna say it had the word immaculate in there, and let me see if I can find it. Oh no, I was thinking of the wrong one. So the immaculate foundation was like a liquid powder foundation, which of course would have, or you would think would have like a matter finish. Uh, the one I was thinking of is the Illusion, which is a hyaluronic skin tint. And I remember getting that, it was on the recommendation of someone, I can't remember anymore. Anyway, I tried it and I didn't actually think that it was very moisturizing, it didn't feel very moisturizing, and it didn't look very moisturizing. I remember it looking drier on my skin than I expected. 
Uh, but I do have like extremely dry skin, so I also wasn't really surprised. I am happy to report that compared to that, this one is uh, much better for my drier skin, and I do like the finish of this and the feel of this one a lot more than that one. All right, I'm just gonna put on some light makeup, and then uh, we'll do like a check-in in in about four hours. So let's go ahead and see how the makeup is wearing at that point. Hello, just doing a four-hour check-in. I am standing in front of a giant window. It's actually really hot. Standing in front of a window, and I just reapplied my lipstick. I'll list everything down below that I have on my face, but I just put on a little bit of blush, that powder that you saw right here in that freckle zone, a little bit of eyeshadow, mascara, um, eyebrow, and lips. That's all I have on my face. So I didn't put on you know, any bronzer, highlight, anything like that, any additional powder. I think this skin tint is looking really, really good so far. I I had mentioned, I think when I first put it on, that it looked a little bit heavy and a little bit makeup-y. And I think, whenever I say that, I think what I'm trying to say is like, the makeup looks like it's just kind of sitting on my face instead of kind of melding into my skin. But I have noticed with this that it definitely looks much better. Like it took some time for it to like, really kind of meld with my skin. And now that it has, I think it looks pretty flawless. And I'm filming this on my iPhone, which, really seems to, seems to show every imperfection that I have, even ones that I didn't know I had. Uh, anyway, so this should give you a really good idea as to what this looks like on my skin. I think it looks really blurred, um, especially where I applied the powder on my nose and everything. I'm really surprised that like, I still don't feel like I need to uh, powder the tip of my nose. I really feel like that's generally where I have to powder and I don't, I don't feel like I have to. But yeah, it's looking, um, it's looking really good, isn't it? I think so. All right, so this is the four hour mark, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like at the end of the day. Hello, hello. It is actually nine hours later, so it's been five hours since my last check-in. So I put on this makeup at 8 a.m. ish. I did my first check-in at uh, 12 noon, and now it's about 5 p.m. So it's a nine hour wear test. It's been five hours since my last check-in. I was just examining my skin, uh, closely and um, well let me start with the good news the good news is overall I think this makeup looks wonderful I think I see a, just a little bit of wearing away like underneath my eyes I didn't put any extra concealer I didn't put any powder down there so maybe um, if I put powder down there it would help a little bit I did put powder here and I think that did um, keep uh, the foundation in place. It did also keep the shine at bay. I don't think that I've gotten that much shinier throughout the nine hours. Um, I didn't retouch or anything, any of my makeup. This is, um, well, you could probably tell. I need, <laughs> I need like a lipstick refresh. Let's do that actually. <laughs> there we go. I'm using the uh, new color from um, Sisley, this is number 32 Sheer Ginger in their Fito Rouge Shine, their refillable lipstick. Anyway, everything will be down below in my description box, everything I use. But uh, yeah, I didn't touch up any of my makeup. So yes, the under eyes I think probably could have benefited from a little bit of powder. What I do see is right in my chin area, and I'll zoom in here, uh, right in my chin area, I feel like I see just like a little bit of uh, wearing away a little bit, not even wearing away. What am I trying to say? It just looks like the makeup has caked up a little bit. That happens to me a lot. I don't know if it's from eating, from like wiping my mouth or whatever it is that happens, you know, quite a bit with makeup. Uh, but what I've noticed is makeup that doesn't completely uh, like meld with my skin, makeup that I feel like just sits on my skin, this happens to more often. And I think I was mentioning that before that I felt like this makeup kind of sat on my skin a little bit more than some other makeup that I'm used to. Um, it did seem to get better during my first check-in. Like it just took a little bit of, you know, a bit of time for it to settle into my skin. Um, but there still seems to have been a little bit kind of uh, just hanging out on my chin. And I think that got a little bit of textury as the day went on and as I ate and drank and talked and all the things. So I do see a little bit of that on my chin. Other than that, I think everything looks really, really great. It looks great around my nose. I think that's what I'm most surprised about. I keep mentioning that. I haven't had to powder the tip of my nose. I don't feel like the makeup has worn away. 
um, at the tip of my nose more than, you know, my under eyes or even here on my chin. I think it looks really great. And that's so unusual for a foundation. So I do feel like if you have oilier skin, this is probably going to be a really great skin tint for you. And I know, you know, speaking to my friends with oilier skin, they kind of stay away from things that are like a hydrating skin tint. Uh, that seems to be something that would probably break up on oilier skin more quickly. But just by the looks on my on the tip of my nose, I don't have oily skin, so I can't say for sure, but just going by what's happening on the tip of my nose, I feel like this would be really great for normal to oily skin types. Um, anyway, and I have dry skin and I think it does look really great on my skin as well. It hasn't worn away strangely on my forehead or anything. It looks great underneath my cheeks. My blush um, has worn beautifully over it. It hasn't faded. Um, it hasn't clumped up or anything because again, I didn't powder all over my face. I just powdered like right here. And that's it. I mean, I would say aside from my chin, aside from the under eye area, um, it's worn very, very well. And here, the chin and the under eye, I would say it's worn Okay, but overall, I really like this. I think it is really beautiful, especially if you like uh, a tint as opposed to something with, you know, higher coverage. Um, and I do like that it is hydrating. I do like that there is a little bit of radiance, but not too much. Um, like on my forehead where I didn't powder at all, I think it looks really, really nice. It has a very natural, um, like slightly radiant skin-like finish. And I really like that, especially for the summertime. I just feel like, you know, I want my skin to look a little juicier. Um, and this does the job. So we'll just do some close-ups here of my forehead, down my nose, and then hopefully we'll catch that chin area again. And then along my jaw. So I really like this. I'm gonna to continue to test it. But for this first nine hour wear test, I would give the skin tint two thumbs up. I think it's really good. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.